Affecting the changes required to meet our climate goals is possible. Our last report basically analyzed over 60 scenarios through which Canada could achieve net zero by 2050. Um, and the changes that it showed are all technically feasible. We know that we can design policies that will affect the change that we need. And the change, you know, I don't want to mince my words here, the, the change that's required to meet net zero is of uh, basically unprecedented speed and magnitude. But I truly believe that basically this decade that we're in now is the most critical time to be bending the curve on emissions. We need to use and produce a lot fewer, a lot less of fossil fuels. So those are the things that when you burn, produce greenhouse gas emissions. And at the same time, we need to be growing a whole lot our non-emitting clean renewable sources of, of energy supply. So one perfect example that most people are probably familiar with is electric vehicles. Now we use gasoline for electric vehicles. If you try to use electricity for electric vehicles and at the same time, make sure that the way in which we produce electricity is super clean, like really, really clean, non-emitting. Um, then that's perfect because that means we'll be driving our cars without polluting. The second thing when it comes to passenger vehicles, so the real cars and trucks that we drive, we basically need to not be selling any more internal combustion gasoline vehicles and we need to only be buying um, electric vehicles. For new buildings, so any new building that we're building, it needs to be uh, built in a very energy efficient way. So that means really good insulation so that it doesn't leak heat out in the winter. We live in homes, we work in businesses that are decades old, likely. Um, and that is actually where the real challenge lies because it's much more expensive to refurbish a building and make it energy efficient. So that's really the next frontier um, for climate policy, I say, in Canada, in the building sector, is to really think about how we can retrofit more buildings um, to make them compatible with net zero. I would say carbon pricing is fundamental, but then also this suite of, of sector-specific and technology-specific um, regulations. I think you need to implement a whole host of other types of policies, including regulations that are more specific to specific sectors or specific technologies. Also mentioned that, you know, accountability legislation, which is what we just passed in Canada um, just this summer, is also really important. I think one really important thing is to ensure that you have a diversity of voices at the table um, when it comes to designing and implementing different kinds of policies. So it's not just policymakers in Ottawa, but that those policy decisions are being consulted with communities across the country, and in particular with communities that are already marginalized, that already um, have kind of existing vulnerabilities when it comes to this transition. I think lots of people are interested in advancing climate policy and addressing the climate challenge in Canada. And if that's you, then you are in the climate movement. I think you don't have to be um, an expert in the field. You know, if you have time, I think it means volunteering for organizations that you see are doing good work. So this is pretty simple, but I think amplifying the, the agenda, whether it's on social media or whether it's um, in other spaces, I think can be really important. So the more bodies that we have doing that, saying that climate change is important, helping clarify some of the policies, if that's what you're interested in doing, I think is really um, important.